Welcome back to the channel, guys. That is me, AED744. So today, guys, we'll do Asian Club Round of 16 recap of the both games, guys. So please remember to watch the video, guys. And if you make it all the way, let me know, guys. And let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments below. So we're going to start first with Bahrain versus Japan. Japan, man, I mean, <clears throat> I always knew they were going to win this game because I knew Japan, for me, they're a really organized team. And they just had to slip up against Iraq. You know, they finished second in the group. And for Bahrain, man, it was just tough for them. Like, imagine winning the group consisting of South Korea and Jordan. And you have to play against Japan. That's your reward. It, it feels so cool. You know, it feels so cool. Because honestly, guys, I think if Bahrain played against any other team, they would have had a better chance and maybe possibly could have won. Like, imagine Bahrain had Iraq. Who knows? It could have been a whole different story. Anyways, that's beside the point. You know, and talking about this game, man, Japan were just too good. Japan were amazing. Um, Bahrain did have their chances here and there in the first half. They had that... Um, they had two decent shots, but it was straight to... The, they had one decent shot, but it was straight to Suzaki. And that first goal, man... Great, great goal there. I believe um, Nakamura hit the post. And then Ritsudoan got on the end of the rebound to make it 1-0. Then the second half, man, Japan, they play really, really good football. And then a silly, silly error made by Ali, the left back, I believe, <coughs> made a <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> made a clumsy error um, for um, Ritz, uh, uh, Kubo to score to make it 2-0. Then uh, Bahrain did get one back through a set piece there. Very, very sketchy goalkeeper for Suzaki. Once again, guys, I still don't trust Suzaki in the air. I think Japan's weakness is their uh, is their aerial duels. You know, their set pieces is what makes Japan very vulnerable. Suzaki makes an error there. It's his own goal. Uh, then to wrap things up, Makutuma plays a great ball for Yuada to make it 3-1 and to give Japan a huge win in the quarterfinals. I mean, round of 16. And they'll be playing against Iran. And we'll get to Iran in a bit. Right? So for Japan, man, very dominant win, huge, huge win, and um, yeah, Japan, man, I think they're they're gonna they're slowly building momentum for the tournament, and now they'll be playing against Ura, uh, Iran in the quarterfinals, and then potentially Qatar, Uzbekistan, the semi. So Japan have a pretty favorable route to the final if they get past Iran. You could make that argument. Moving on to Iran one, Syria one, guys, I'm very, very worried for Iran because yes, they played a really good game, and yes, they won through on penalties. This is worrying, though. They having to rely on penalties to beat Syria is just frustrating. And yeah, they create a lot of chances. And obviously, um, the goalkeeper, Madani, made some really good saves for Syria. But let's be real. Iran should be beating Syria. They should be beat. And the fact that it took them penalties is, is kind of disappointing, you know. And Iran was only able to open the score until Osoa made a very clumsy mistake. I believe he takes down Taremi inside the box. Taremi scores a penalty. And it's 1-0. But at that point on... It really did feel like, um, you know, Iran were obviously trying to get the second goal, but you could tell the Syria team had a really good defensive plan. I mean, Weiss was a fantastic right back, you know, um, very, very solid. And in the second half, man, a very, very clumsy mistake. Clumsy mistake there from Banner Abed. And um, he gives away an unnecessary penalty, and Kruben scores a penalty to make it 1 1. And you could tell that once Syria made it 1 1, the momentum was to their side. Yeah, Iran had their chance at everything. But you could tell that I feel like this game was changed because of the penalty. That penalty in the second half completely changed the game because Iran were now um, be defensive and Syria were now going for it, you know. And this is very pragmatic, you know. And like I said before, guys, you never want to have a 1-0 lead. 1-0 lead is one of the worst leads to have in football because when the other team scores, all the momentum is with them and you could see teams lose. Like, we see a lot of teams from a 1-0 position lose the game because of because the momentum shifts to the other team, right? Uh, then Tarami gets sent off for a dangerous foul. I believe he got a yellow card earlier in the second half for diving. He did a dive there to win a penalty. That's another thing Tarami needs to stop doing. And then he got a second yellow because he takes down a Syria player inside, um, outside the box. And it's a very dangerous foul. It's a tactical foul. And Syria go down to, uh, Iran goes down to 10 men. Osman was also taken off as well. And Syria had chance after chance. They had a really good spell of chances, I believe right at the end of the regulation where there's 10 minutes added on. And then the first half extra time, man, it was all, uh, Iran were being defensive. Iran were being defensive and uh, Syria were going for it, but they just couldn't score. And, you know, goes to penalties and Iran gets the job done. Benarov makes a crucial save on Fahid Youssef to deny him. And so for Syria, man, I think they played well. I think they played really well in this tournament. They made it to round of 16. This is the best they've ever done in their history. They advanced from the group and, I think what the biggest takeaway from I've learned from Syria, this team is very gritty. This team is solid defensively. This team is well-organized. And yeah, 
Just their attack is what kind of frustrates me because they create a lot of chances this game, and they could have won this game. They could have won this game, especially in the second half when they had those flurry amount of chances right at the end there. Um, but Iran were able to see it through. And so for Iran, man, they're going to have to improve significantly. They're going to have to improve significantly if they want to beat Japan because Taremi is going to be out for the game, obviously due to a red card. And Osman's going to have to step up. Osman's going to have to step up against Japan because if Osman doesn't step up, it's going to be difficult for Iran to win. But, you know, we'll talk about that on tomorrow's video, my predictions. So stay tuned for that, guys. And I'm going to be looking forward to that. So please remember to like and subscribe if you made it this far. And also, guys, in around 30 minutes' time, we'll be doing our... Um, a reaction to the Asian Cup round of 16 games. They'll do a quick quarterfinal preview. So I hope I can see you guys then. It'll be starting around uh, 40 minutes from now. So I hope we can see you guys then. Remember, guys, to like and subscribe. And yeah, I'll see you guys later, man. Peace out.